Tell me about the story of trying to get R. Kelly on for the album. Well, I'm glad you asked that. <laughs> Have you heard at all about this story? I'm, I'm intrigued to hear about the story. Um, to recruit R. Kelly, I traveled to Chicago eight times over the course of 20 months, went to five shows on his Love Letter tour, and went to his Barnes & Noble book signing and, and bought a book, waited in line for seven hours. This 20-month journey was by far the longest um, journey to recruit anyone on the album. I had never met R. Kelly. I had never even been in a room with R. Kelly. But three years ago, I got hired to DJ at a Fashion Week party in New York, and he was also hired to perform. Well, halfway through my set, someone comes up to me and says, Mr. Kelly will not be performing. He had a throat operation recently. So I'm thinking, if you have a throat operation, why did you sign on to do this? <laughs> 30 minutes later, they come up to me and say, um, and says, um, um, Mr. Kelly would like to speak to you backstage. So I put on a song, I run backstage, and I tell him how great he is and how much I look up to him and respect him and how he's the greatest. He said, like, yeah, yeah, so listen, I had a throat operation and I can't perform. Throw one step in the name of love. I'm gonna come to your setup on stage. I'm gonna sing along, thank everyone for coming, I'm gonna go hang out. Well, he does just that, but when he finishes, something kind of takes over me. And I get on the mic and I go, hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't leave these people like that. And everyone starts screaming and he's looking at me like, crazy? And I'm like, he can't leave us like that. And everyone's like, ah. And I throw on. My mind's telling me no, but my body, my body's telling me yeah. I don't see nothing wrong with a little bump and grind. Next thing you know, he sings bump and grind. Then your body's calling, then seems like you're ready, then fiesta, then ignition, then I believe I can fly. And I got him to do an hour show. Anyway, we hit it off, and at the end of the night, I asked him for his number. I said, I'd love to keep in touch. And, I had just started the album. I wasn't ready to pitch it to, to the great R. Kelly. Six months later, I have a couple songs. And I text him and I say, Hey, Mr. Kelly, it's DJ Cassidy. I'm in Chicago. Could I come by the studio tomorrow to say hello? He writes back, sure. Well, I was in New York. I wasn't in Chicago. What I learned is you never want to put pressure on a celebrity and make them think you're flying to them. So you have to lie and say you're there. So I flew to Chicago, and the whole day I'm calling the studio, calling his cell phone. No answer, no answer, no answer. Leave messages. Go to sleep, defeated. And one in the morning I get a call, Mr. Kelly will see you at 4 a.m. So go to the studio at 4. He plays me two albums worth of music that later became Love Letter and Write Me Back. And then I talked to him for an hour about my vision and my career and my life and my journey and my mission. And he said, well, now I gotta hear this. And I play him what I have and he said, what do you need me to do? And I said, I need you to write a song. And 20 months later, that song was recorded. What he later told me was that, you know, he didn't want to record something that wasn't worthy of what I was doing. And he could have written a song to the first track I left him, he's R. Kelly, but I kept on bringing him a new one. I never emailed anything, kept on flying back with a new track. And and when it when the lightning struck, the lightning when struck. You go through that type of um, emotional rollercoaster, like, okay, this may be it. How do you keep your energy? You know, because you're flying over, because it becomes a bit more of a routine. Yeah, you know, people often ask me, like, when you're coming home the seventh time empty-handed, like, how do you even, like, book another trip? Like, you know, even on the third or fourth, like, what was four times, five times to go back? I don't know. I don't know. I never thought about stopping. I didn't even, like, when people said, is he really going to do it? He's, you know, dicking you around. I was like, no, he's totally doing it. It just hasn't, like, hit yet.
I didn't even I didn't even conceive of stopping for one second. 